Good afternoon and welcome to SCORE's webinar entitled Digital Marketing, Do-It-Yourself Press Releases. Uh, hello, everybody, from SCORE Fairfield County. I'm Steve Smith, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor at SCORE, and I'll be your host today. Our presenter is Tom Martin, and I'll tell you more about Tom in uh, just a minute. But first, a word or two, or three, uh, maybe not three, word or two about SCORE. Some of you already know this, and uh, so just kind of humor me for a minute. But SCORE is a, a part of the Small Business Administration of the U.S. government, and we've been around since the mid-60s. Uh, our mission is to help small businesses get started and flourish, and we do that currently with 320 offices around the United States and more than 3,000 volunteers, some of whom are retired executives and some of whom are uh, people who are still, in, are still working but are graciously uh, volunteering their time. Um, in Fairfield County, which also includes, uh, which is basically Greenwich up through and including Bridgeport, um, it, we have about 130 volunteers currently with various degrees of industry expertise, uh, process expertise, like supply chain, management, things of that nature, and subject matter uh, experts on things like digital marketing, which is what we're going to talk about uh, today. Um, we have three uh, primary ways we deliver this value into the market. One is one-on-one -on -one counseling in our offices in either Bridgeport or uh, in Norwalk. Uh, the second way is through a whole series of workshops and webinars. Obviously, you're on a webinar. And uh, the third way is through really a, a series of, uh, of just access to resources, tools, and answers to frequently asked questions by small businessmen, probably the most frequent of which is, how do I get started? You'll find a lot of that right online at our website, uh, which I would encourage you all to go to if you haven't already been there, fairfieldcounty.score.org. So again, um, well, let me just mention that we do have an, our next webinar is December 5th. We try to do these webinars every two weeks, and in a month where there's three Tuesdays, we, d we typically do three. But the next one is December 5th, and it's time management how to manage your customers. Uh, and I know from my personal experience that that's a tough one uh, to, get, to get straight. Uh, you'll be getting two email reminders. I think you've already gotten one about that, about that webinar. So I encourage you to, to visit that one. So now today, today's event. Okay, we're gonna, we try to end these sharply at 1 o'clock because we're uh, trying to keep our, our lectures on time management too <laughs> accurate and, and, and walk the walk here a little bit. Um, and this is an important point because I always get this question. These slides will be available later in the afternoon at fairfieldcounty.score.org, and uh, the slides and the video will uh, will be available. Um, now, in terms of the way that we're going to work over the next 55 minutes, is I'm about ready to turn it over to Tom after I introduce him. And then you'll be able to log questions in the chat room, which you'll find down in the lower left part of your screen. I think that how to do that is self-explanatory. Um, so you'll go ahead and, and post those, and I'll accumulate them and kind of manage them. And at the end of the work, uh, webinar, we'll, uh, we'll cover them. Um, you're also going to receive an, an email at the end of the webinar asking you to evaluate it, and we really appreciate your uh, input on that. Now, I'm going to stop here uh, shortly, I promise you. Uh, on to our speaker, Tom Martin. Tom, is, Tom spent, not has spent, he spent 20 years as a network news producer, and he's produced stories for uh, Diane Sawyer, other anchors and correspondents on CBS News, as well as securing coverage for his PR clients on Good Morning America, the NBC New Nightly News, and other widely seen programs. He's currently working on a book, Wisdom All Around Us, which I know I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing. So, Tom, 
thank you again very much. And this is actually Tom's second trip uh, here to uh, SCORE webinar. And if you like what you hear here, and I'm sure you will, I look forward to, you know, you, I mean, you can go back into the archives at, our, at scorefearfieldcounty.org and, and listen to his first uh, webinar as well. So, Tom, thanks again. I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll be back in 40, 45 minutes. Tom? Great. Thank, thanks, Steve. It's a thrill to be here. I sort of feel like uh, the SCORE office here in uh, Norwalk is becoming like my, uh, my home away from home. <laughs> I always feel inspired, and I always learn a lot from, uh, from my conversations here and from the other, uh, the other webinars that you've produced. So I, I feel honored to have a chance to present a second one here. And uh, we will be talking about digital marketing. Um, I'll just say up front that there are other aspects to digital marketing, such as you know, YouTube videos and Facebook Live videos and um, newsletter campaigns through you know, MailChimp and Constant Contact and so on. And I'm not really going to be getting into any of that side of digital marketing here, although I'm fascinated by those topics. So if anybody wants to reach out to me uh, anytime, you have my, you'll, you'll have my, well, my email address is right there, so feel free to contact me anytime. But uh, I'm going to focus on press releases. And before, uh, as we ease into this, and I'm, I'm happy to see that a number of people have joined us already, uh, and I know a number of people will have a chance to uh, catch all of this uh, in recorded form. And if anybody's has a question as we move along, please uh, you know, put it in the queue because I'm not going to just inundate you with information. You know, as questions come up, I'm happy to uh, respond to them. And if you, get, if you have a question and you're watching this in recorded form, uh, you have my email address, so email me. Thank you. So let me start with asking you, my audience, my friends, and I, I see my friend Barbara is among my, my friends here, uh, two questions. One is, are you ready to reach a wider audience? It's, um, it's funny. I'm a big fan of motivational speakers and inspirational speakers and so on. And one of my favorite speakers, a fellow who passed away a few years ago, is Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. And he just spoke about that natural progression as we develop our skills and our talents and our, just our love of doing good work, you know, to, with a level of excellence and, you know, service in mind that it's just natural. You know, first we take care of ourselves, then we take care of our family and loved ones, and then our community, which, of course, SCORE is all about. So, you know, are you ready to re reach a wider audience? Well, if you are, um, I think you're going to want to, listen to what I have to say here today because I'm going to show you some ways to connect with that wider audience. But I think that's a desire that we all have. I know that I have that desire. And then the second question is, do you wish more people appreciated your work? Again, um, I spend a lot of, it's, it's, you know, we've all heard the expression, you know, are you working in your business or on your business? And I tend to spend, you know, like 98% of my time working in my business. So I don't really do that much marketing for myself, oddly enough, or ironically enough. But uh, one of my mentors, who I'm going to mention a little bit later also, Chris Brogan, who's written some great books on marketing and um, newsletter campaigns and so on, uh, hosted a, a, a workshop last year, and it really occurred to me that I, I sometimes feel that I'm, I'm like that football coach. Uh, you know, if the team has worked hard, hard, hard and perfected their moves and plays and so on, and then they're on the five-yard line, how do you get closure on that? How do you get the points on the board? Well, I love helping people um, do that, and what I want to share with you today is some strategies for doing that. And um, as far as my own experience and why you know, I bring some experience to the table, I sort of feel like uh, I, won't, I won't do this. This is not really a sincere threat. I feel like singing the uh, Joni Mitchell song, Both Sides Now. I've looked at life from both sides now. I, the first side was 20 years as a television news producer, uh, as Steve told you a little bit. And then uh, for about 10 or 12 years now, I've been on the PR side. And so what, what I mean by both sides now is that um, for many years, whether I was working for uh, Good Morning America or CBS Sunday Morning or Public Television's Lately Business Report or even the Food Network's uh, show on restaurants, um, uh, I was often on the receiving end of press releases. And so a lot of what I'm going to share with you today speaks to that experience of what's it like to get you know, 20 or 30 press releases every day. Are there some that stand out and that really inspire the producer or the assignment desk editor to take action? And yes, there are, and that's what I want to share with you today. And then on the other side, uh, I work with the clients uh, 
I recently, like I said, my friend Barbara Wilson, I see is on the call, and I did some writing recently for Barbara, and so it was a matter, sort of like, it reminded me a little bit of my, my old uh, TV news days, where, okay, well, here's the subject area, throw yourself into it, learn all you can, how do you convey this, this information to an, a lay audience, you know, so that you can kind of inspire them to take the action that you want them to take, and that's, and that's really what a press release does, so both sides now. Um, and I'm just going to tell you real quickly where we're going to go over the next hour. And like I said, please feel free to interrupt with questions um, anytime. Uh, some people are saying there's no sound yet. Is that true? We're okay. Okay. <laughs> good. 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 Okay. Because I'm not I'm not the greatest technician, you know. Um, overview: Where we're headed. Uh, these are areas we're going to cover over the next. Uh, 40, 45 minutes, leaving some room for questions. What is a press release? The psychology of a great press release. Examples of press releases for various purposes. In particular, you know, it, it's funny, I'm, an, I'm a member of a, a business networking group uh, that meets in Darien, uh, Connecticut here uh, just about every week. And uh, there they have sort of conditioned us to be specific about what we're looking for. So I'll often say, well, I really like working with authors. And that, that's true. But I like, you know, so, so I have a few press releases that I've written for authors that I'm going to share with you and tell you why I believe they work and how they've gotten results for us. But uh, the fact is I really love variety also. So um, I, I'll show you an example of, or two of a press release for a, sm a small business owner, for a uh, person in the medical field or an expert to, you know, share their knowledge and, you know, why, why people should be moved to action uh, to, to you know, work with that person. And then last but not least, uh, an example of a press release that I wrote for a, a nonprofit organization here in Connecticut. Um, and then perhaps most importantly, because there's a lot of room for subjective, uh, you know, uh, sort of winging it and doing things your own way, you know, a press release is, and there's no, you know, I'll just be very upfront here, there's no one perfect way to do a press release, to write a press release. So um, I encourage you to experiment a little bit and so on, but I'm, I'm happy to show you exactly how I do it. And But, but uh, once you have written a press release for your business or your book or what have you, or your favorite uh, nonprofit, um, I'm going to get into four ways to use that press release, and that's where sort of the digital marketing side of this comes in. And then, like I said, we're going to leave plenty, plenty of room for questions um, at the end there. And if, you, if a question occurs to you later, you know, email me, like I said, tom at tommartinmedia.com. So let's just write, get into it. What is a press release? And some of my publicist colleagues will send out – I do a lot of my um, pitching of stories, story ideas by email. And so a lot of my publicist colleagues will send out something that's a very spare paragraph, you know, sort of like we learned in you know, high school journalism class, who, what, when, where, and why, and how, um, little details. And, you know, we, we have to acknowledge up front that most producers, especially if you're interested in pitch, pitching a national show, whether that's TV or radio or a national uh, publication like uh, USA Today or the New York Times or, you know, whatever it might be, these are busy, busy people, and it's sort of like just the time they have left over after they've done their primary work for the day. You know, that's when they look at new press releases because a lot of their work is given to them uh, through assigned, you know, assigned stories from their executive producer or their correspondent or what have you. Uh, so there's not a lot of time. So yes, you know, it's it's helpful to have those, uh, you know, the factoids there, but um, you need. I really believe you need to put things in context. Um, what is a press release? Um, as you'll see from the examples I'll share with you in a couple minutes, I believe that an effective press release provides context, is newsworthy and timely, helps secure what I call earned media, and is a good fit for the journalist who receives, the, receives it. So let me uh, unpack that a little bit. Um, and again, uh, anybody have any questions? I know we're just starting to get into it, but at any time, if you have a question, put it in the queue there and we'll answer it. Um, an effective press release provides context. So again, you know, as I'll share in a moment, um, it's very natural, especially if we work hard on our business, to take a lot of pride in the quality of our work. And so we might be tempted to talk about the awards that we've won, and you know, we're proud to share testimonials, and you know, and uh, if we uh, have added some new features to our business, um, we want to tell the world about those, and so on. But as I'll remind you again in just a moment, it's really we, we'd be wise not to think so much about ourselves, but 
spend more time thinking about the people out there who could, could benefit from our help. So that's a little bit, you know, that context will be a little more apparent in a minute. But uh, again, thinking as a journalist, um, it's important that a, news, that a press release be newsworthy. And uh, again, I, think, I still think of myself as a, a journalist, even all these years later. And as I've seen from my own PR experience, um, if I send a journalist a what I think is a really great idea, say somebody's an expert in a certain field, maybe it's fitness or parenting or finance, and I demonstrate that there's there's real value for the audience to you know hearing from this person for five or ten minutes. Um, often the if I if I've pitched the right producers and reporters, uh, they're going to say, wow, this this could be a good story for us. This this could be interesting. But if there's no uh, sort of fixed date for it, such as, you know, maybe, hey, this would be great for your, you know, if you're doing stories about New Year's resolutions or something, or, you know, what, you know, spending time with loved ones around the holiday season or something like that, um, you know, or back to school season or something like that, uh, there's no, you know, we're not, we haven't really lit a fire under these people to, to move on it now. They'll say, well, this, this could be a really good story for us. I'm going to put it in a file folder and put it aside for, you know, other stories that uh, we, we, when we're in need of a story, maybe we'll get back to this. And I have, you know, over the years I have received email replies from people saying, hey, remember that story you sent me six months ago? And we, we're looking for something, and uh, I just thought about it. But that's, that's not the kind of results that you want, and that's not the kind of results that I want. So it's important that your, uh, your press release be newsworthy, and that will become uh, clearer again in a few, a few minutes uh, and timely, sort of the same thing. Um, and again, I guess to underscore that word newsworthy, if there's any way to fit it in with the headlines right now, um, that would be great. Um, you know, at the time that we're doing this live, uh, one of the big stories, you know, dominating the news right now has to do with uh, workplace conditions uh, for women in our country and, you know, harassment and important uh, things like, uh, you know, protection of every worker's rights and so on. And uh, so if uh, earlier this year, I did some work for a, um, a great expert on diversity and inclusion, and so her message and her book is very, very timely right now. It's very newsworthy because it fits right in with some, you know, major headlines dominating the news. And so, if there's any way in your field that you can do that on a local level or national level, um, that's really going to help you. And what I mean by uh, a great press release helps you secure earned media. Um, you would, you might be surprised, but even a lot of traditional local news stations, if it's like a, a mid mid uh, morning talk show or something like that, they say, well, you know, we we're interested in your guest or we're interested in you. Uh, I, I'd like you to know that we charge, you know, a thousand dollars for each segment that we have on the air. And when I, often when I hear that, I'm kind of shocked because I I think that a good story should earn its right, you know, on the air. It's it's worth five minutes of free airtime. And so, uh, you know, when I work with clients, I, I'm always trying to come up with a strategy for how can we demonstrate that this, this, this deserves free coverage. We shouldn't have to pay for the coverage. That being said, I have some other friends who've made, you know, quite nice businesses out of distributing, uh, you know, creating shows with interview segments and so on, and they charge people, you know, $5,000 to be an interview guest, and it goes out to, you know, the top four markets in America and so on. So I'm not saying it's not worthwhile, but it's just, I, I prefer, I guess, maybe again, maybe I'm a little old-fashioned, I like earned media. And a good fit, you know, that's kind of obvious. Again, some stories about sort of uh, enlightenment and meditation and so on, I would pitch to, you know, Oprah Magazine, uh, others uh, about business expertise, I'd pitch to Bloomberg and Business Week and so on. So, But let's move along. So the psychology of a great press release, I've already sort of covered this a little bit. We're all proud of the awards we've won and the, you know, our record of service, and we've been in the business for three generations, and you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all important, and I'm not, you know, dismissing it. But is it really relevant to the people out there? We, we we'd like them to do business with us, and so um, it's important to take pride in the work that we do. But don't lose sight of who, you know, your your focus should really be on, and your focus should really be on serving the people. You know, that whole idea of service is very important. Um, and again, sort of in the same psychology of great press release, for some reason I was reminded of the old uh, 
Looney Tunes cartoon of the uh, the sheepdog watching the uh, you know guarding the sheep from the fox, and there they are punching in at the time clock. Journalists work hard too; they're human beings. Sometimes we think of like, oh, the media, you know, especially in our current political season, like the 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 evil media, or what's what's their secret plan? Or, well, personally, I think it's a lot too disorganized to have any kind of secret plan, but. Uh, you know, these are people, you know, who are earning a living. They have, you know, for the most part, they have good intentions. They really want to help the people who they think of as their audience and so on. So if we can give them a press release that say, wow, this is perfect for my show or my newspaper, uh, and it really serves our audience, it gives them takeaway value, you know, our audience is going to be grateful to us for bringing them this interesting or, or even entertaining information, um, you know, that works in our favor, and we're likely to get the coverage that we're seeking, and that's really what a press release is all about. Um, you know, and it's not just about the media. Uh, I've worked with a number of uh, clients who are, say, financial advisors and so on, and they, and also I'm thinking of one fellow up in uh, Toronto who's an, a consultant who specializes in business innovation, and p people like this have been very um, grateful to have sort of a steady stream of news items, you know, a lot of times a, pa a page of their website to be in the news or in the media. And if every month they have, you know, two radio interviews and an article of some kind and so on, and, the, you know, the focus of the articles can change as the, as the months roll along and that kind of thing. If somebody is, uh, has, you know, they're looking for a financial advisor and they have a list of ten websites they're going to check out, and one of those websites has a very busy in the news page, um, they're going to appreciate that person uh, a lot more. So, um, you know, so so again, it's not just about journalists, basically. And, and also, I don't know if I'm going to get into this in great detail, but uh, writing a great press release and putting it online can be very helpful often for uh, what we call search engine optimization. You know, it could boost the, the you know the rank of your uh, your website, make it help it appear a little bit higher because people are checking out that web that uh, press release and then they're going to your homepage and so on. So it, it it can help you know. So it's not only about the journalists who we're targeting here. Um, and like I said, a brief note about brevity. As you'll probably see from uh, as you'll probably see from my press release examples in a few minutes. Um, I tend to write long. I guess I'm, an, again, an old-fashioned journalist, and I would like to tell a story. I think of myself as a storyteller, and that's, you know, that's what I do. So I tend to write long, but if you can, if you can uh, come up with a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you can come up with a shorter uh, way of t getting the story across, I definitely encourage you to do that. I think people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter all the time thanks to social media and the other pressures we all have in our lives. So uh, brevity is great. And uh, what do I mean by W-I-I-F-M? I said, remember, W-I-I-F-M, uh, that is, what's in it for me? I've been in touch uh, this week with my, my dear friend Shelley Ross, who was executive producer of uh, uh, Good Morning America during my time there. She was actually the producer who got the first interview with uh, – legendary Charles Manson way back when, and so she's been talking about that recently. He's, he was in the news with his, his death and, uh, and some other, other big stories that she worked on before she became executive producer of, uh, of Good Morning America. But in our afternoon story meeting, she would always say, okay, tomorrow morning we're, we have two hours on the air, that's 16 segments. For every one of those 16 segments, our audience is sitting at home saying, what's in it for me? How is this relevant to my life? Are you going to give me a little tip, or she'd call them nuggets? Are you going to give me some information that will be helpful to, to me in my life? Uh, if so, I'm going to stay tuned, and I'm going to appreciate that, of course. You might even buy the product that you're talking about or the book that you're talking about and that kind of thing, or, or follow up with uh, this expert's website or something. But if you're not going to be relevant to me, <clears throat> I think I'm going to change the channel and watch the Today Show or something like that. So what's in it for me is important. Um, Again, I think I mentioned my friend uh, Chris Brogan, marketing expert Chris Brogan. He hosted a webinar uh, last week. He called it Tapas Content. People want little nuggets, little bites. I don't know if you're like me, but you may get a number of uh, weekly newsletters in your email inbox. And uh, a couple of my friends put right at the top, you know, this is going to take 58 seconds to read. I love that because it's like, wow, this person's really appreciative of my time. This is, this is great. So people like little bite-sized bits of content. And as I said at the beginning of this hour, 
um, when it comes to digital marketing, I think that video is really important and really valuable. It's getting you know more more appreciated all the time. So if you'd ever like to talk about that, uh, get in touch. But tap his content, and you can do that. You can do that. Okay, <clears throat> and I might speed it up a little bit here, folks. But uh, um, here, here's sort of a key that I think you will find valuable. Uh, there's something that I call the 333 rule. And basically what that means is, again, as you'll see, we're almost, we're two, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, we're two slides away from looking at some examples. Uh, I call it the 333 rule, and here's how I unpack that. In the first three seconds, um, uh, and I see we have a question, I'll get to that um, in just a second, uh, from uh, Anthony. Um, in the first three seconds, the assignment desk editor or the producer or the reporter is going to look at your headline, and I like to use a subheadline also, and they're going to say, is this for me? Is this relevant? Is this timely? Remember the, you know, those criteria that I told you about a few minutes ago? Um, if so, they're going to say, okay, I'm willing to, and they may just make this decision subconsciously, okay, I'm willing to spend 30 seconds on you know, reading the first paragraph or something and see if this story idea really is for me. And if uh, those 30 seconds validates that decision, they're going to spend three, uh, three more minutes um, reading maybe, you know, your whole, hopefully your whole press release, and then hopefully they will be moved to action. Um, and Anthony asked the question, uh, any suggestions for developing or sourcing media co contacts or lists? I'm going to get into that in just a couple minutes, but I will say that, you know, whatever your field is, uh, if it's real estate, if it's uh, finance, if it's parenting, you know, you probably know of some uh, articles and some authors, you know, magazine writers who you uh, like to read yourself who write about, you know, those, those topics, your, your, your topic, and, uh, and uh, you know, perhaps radio shows where somebody has had an interesting guest, or maybe you've noticed one of your competitors on a show or in a newspaper uh, article. And so those are logical places to look. You can also certainly do uh, internet research. I've been helping a, a, a client who um, he's an expert on prisoners of war, and so on Veterans Day we launched a, um, a new approach to, you know, do, going a little bit deeper with some information, loose odds and ends, and clues that are out there to uh, perhaps finding out what happened to certain uh, prisoners of war over the years. And so there, I was just searching the internet. Okay, what reporters have have written about this in the past? The New York Times, CBS News, etc. And uh, you know, I would suggest doing the same thing. And then, okay, once you have their names, what do you do with that? Um, I would go to um, LinkedIn, and I would go to um, to uh, Twitter. And not everybody is going to share their uh, email address quite so easily. But if you put together a list of you know 20 or 30 journalists, I bet you're going to get you know 10 good solid uh, email addresses. And and if you want to check out the webinar, the score webinar that I did a couple months ago, that I called do it, <clears throat> do it yourself public relations, you'll find a lot more information about that. So thanks for the question, Anthony. But let's get right into examples of press releases. And I'm not going to you know analyze these line by line because I think that would just take too long and I just told you guys about brevity but um, let's just dig right into it here and we're going to start with authors this is a uh, uh, an example and, and if you want to get the uh, slides so that you can you know enlarge these later I encourage you to do that if you're if you're interested <clears throat> but this is a press release that I wrote for a project I'm working on right now a children's book author um, and uh, it's a holiday story uh, for young readers and parents to read to their kids. And um, the, the headline, the major headline that I gave this one is, an inspiring story of love, inclusion, cultural celebration, and the love of a dog just in time for the holidays. So again, it doesn't say, well, this is, this is written by a very experienced uh, educator and, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, but it's more like, What's in it for you, the reader, and your children, and why is this timely? It's here just in time for the holidays and so on. Um, you know, a little sub headline down below, destined to be a new children's classic. Um, it's kind of blowing our own horn there a little bit, but, you know, nothing, you know, that's kind of a way to show your passion. Um, and then below that, it mentions that proceeds benefit animal rescue shelters and children's literacy programs. And so you can be, you know, somebody who purchased this, purchases this book on Amazon will um, feel, know they're helping, you know, literacy programs and animal shelters. So 
that's a good thing. Um, and uh, I won't go too much into this because I want to uh, move along to give you some other examples. <clears throat> Here's another book, totally different aud audience. That was the previous one for children. This is for a bus business audience. This is for a project I worked on earlier this year, business consultant Howard Shore. And its headline is, Lead Your Company to New Levels of Growth and Profitability. Um, that's, again, what's in it for you. That sound, those sound like, you know, that sounds like a great goal to achieve. And then the subheadline is, in your, business, in, in your Business is a Leaky Bucket, executive coach Howard Shore reveals how businesses can capture millions of dollars in previously unseen profit. So again, it's how does this fit into someone's life? Um, and, you know, people who don't have a business, own a business, they're not going to, or are not a manager and so on, they're not going to be interested in this, and that's perfectly fine. And you'll notice that I started, and it, you know, you probably need a magnifying glass to see this, but I uh, start with a testimonial because, you know, again, people might assume like, well, of course, in the press release, they're going to say only great things about themselves or himself. But um, so sometimes, especially with a book, <coughs> excuse me, I do start with uh, a testimonial like that. And uh, you can't see it on the image right here, but just, you know, on page two of this press release, I have um, some bullet points, um, you know, about what you what you'll learn, you know, from the book and so on. And then at the bottom of press release, as as you may have seen with many different styles of press releases, uh, at the very bottom, I, 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 in this case, I say about Howard Shore. You know, here's his credentials, here's where he went to school, he's been interviewed, you know, in such and such a place, and so on. And then at the very bottom, you know, I'll include a link to his uh, website, and I'll also give my own contact information. You know, if you'd like to schedule an interview with this author, you know, contact uh, Tom Martin, et cetera. So here's another uh, book uh, from my friends here in Connecticut, uh, Heather Hanson O'Neill. Uh, author and motivational speaker Heather Hanson O'Neill tells readers how to create the life of their dreams. That sounds pretty good. Um, Find Your Fire at 40, Creating a Joyful Life During the Age of Discontent, offers insights and lessons for readers of all ages. And again, the reason I wrote the, that headline and subheadline that way is because it'll give a, you know, the host of a local morning talk show or something like that or a radio producer say, is this relevant to us? Are we interested in this or not? And I will tell you that when it comes to pitching these ideas to different journalists, um, I like to sort of cast a wide net. So I'll send out, you know, dozens and dozens, <coughs> excuse me, of press releases because even the uh, journalists who I think will, you know, really be responsive, they're not always that responsive. Um, <coughs> so, okay, uh, Kathleen had a question. Uh, we tend to email releases now in the body of the email without attachments. Um, I do that as well, to be honest with you. And so even on the examples I'm sharing with you right now, you, you know, you'll see an image. So many times I will do it in the body uh, of an email note, you know, with the subject line uh, to, uh, intended to grab their attention. You know, like I said, on the Prisoner of War one, you know, I tied it into Veterans Day and, you know, important information the government isn't telling you and <clears throat> little details intended to... Uh, you know, hook their interest and so on. So I, I, I put them in the body of an email note also. So um, you're not doing it wrong, Kathleen. Um, and hold on just one second. Let me just have a sip of tea here. And Anthony had another question. What is the predominant header phrase used today, uh, press release or news release? Um, I think either one is fine. I don't, I don't think there's a, you know, a one single answer to that question. So... <clears throat> I don't know if that's a satisfying answer, <laughs> but I, I don't think either. I think either one works, to be honest with you. Um, here's a press release uh, for an inventor, my friend uh, Ruth Sutcliffe, who's also here in Connecticut. She has a very interesting story. She spent 30 years in the fragrance industry, designing perfumes for, you know, some celebrities like Beyonce and Celine Dion and so on, and for um, other, you know, household products. To, that they want to smell nice and all that. <clears throat> and uh, in her personal story, she, you know, she has a couple of family members who were touched by uh, dementia and uh, Parkinson's. And so she b became very interested in those, that subject, that area of health. And she found that uh, smell, the sense, our sense of smell can really trigger 
memories, um, you know, bring back, I don't know if bring back is quite the right phrase, but it can sort of spark conversation and get uh, uh, people who, uh, who are experiencing dementia and, uh, or Parkinson's to think about some of their favorite memories and so on and really engage them in conversation. So uh, Ruth spends a lot of time visiting uh, senior centers and so on, and it's really a pretty cool uh, invention. So uh, my, my headlines here were uh, an, in an innovative approach for tapping our remarkable sense of smell to evoke memories and conversation. And uh, the subheadline below talks about speech pathologists, occupational therapists, and senior care experts and how they see potential opportunities in this whole idea. Excuse me. <coughs> so um, it tells you, you know, who this is intended for, but it's really, I thought, pretty, pretty fascinating. So let me move along to another example. Um, okay. Okay, great. Um, best length for header and subheader. Uh, from Ed, um, you know, it's sort of it's sort of like I'll, I'll say here here's the right answer, or what I think is the right answer, but don't don't follow my lead too closely. I'm all for brevity. Um, I like words that you know are motion, you know, verbs. I guess uh, words containing uh, you know evoking motion. Uh, why something's timely? Why it's important? I, I think you want to. I don't. You know, depend unless it's a field that's really kind of, uh, you know, flamboyant or entertainment oriented or something like that. I don't think you want to like exaggerate too much. But I think uh, I think in the headlines and in the subject line of an email pitch, you can uh, you know take pride in what you have to offer and like you know an important you know new breakthrough in the way to do such and such. So. Um, but in terms of, I, I can't really give you a number of words for the length, but uh, shorter is better. And uh, sort of like I, I warned you guys uh, earlier in the hour, uh, I tend to write long. And people tend to read, you know, I've had, I've had very good results with my approach to press releases, as Steve told you, with, you know, many national shows and so on. So, um, so I, don't think, I don't think I'm turning anybody off by, they said, oh, my gosh, there are too many uh, words there. And I think that um, I think that uh, the 333 rule that I gave you a few minutes ago is very important and very useful. And so I don't think I've I could be you know I could be wrong. There's probably no way to know this, but I don't think I've uh, had any story ideas rejected uh, because like oh my gosh, look at this press release. It's three pages long. I, I, I'm not even going to read the first word. What I think they do is they look at the headline. And then if it's as, this could this has potential, they look a little bit deeper. They know they don't really need to read the entire thing, um, and they might you know scan it and see that down at the bottom there's a link to the to the uh, website and so on, or to a video on YouTube. Um, often shows, especially television shows, like uh, like to see that somebody's a good interview if they've done an interview before. But if not, you know we all have to start somewhere, so that's fine. And then Anthony had another question. Do you find email photo attachments bounce off recipient firewalls, or do you avoid this challenge by using applications of like Mailchimp? Um, I tend to avoid using attachments as much as I can, to be honest with you, because some, sometimes I I found that, <clears throat> especially with national shows, that it does bounce off. You're right. So that's a very good very good question. Okay. So let me move a little bit faster. Um, a press release for a small business. This is for uh, another a small business again here in Connecticut, where they sell electrical. You know, they sort of broker electricity rates because a lot of people don't know that electricity has been deregulated and there's potential cost savings there. Again, it fits into people's lives how it's valuable. Um, there are press releases, and, you, and again, if you you know request the slides here, you can magnify these, or you can email me. If you'd like a copy of any of these press releases, email me, and I'll be happy to share them with you. I certainly don't mind doing that. <clears throat> um, I've written press releases for uh, tech people and developers of different apps. In this case, it's an app for to prevent bullying called Anonymous Alerts, <clears throat> so that children and school personnel can report something if they see it, so they don't have to worry about giving their name. And again, it, this press release, of course, talks about the benefits. It doesn't talk about how great we are, you know. And then <clears throat> for a dentist, of course, it talks about, you know, talks about the reader, the audience out there. You know, would you like a great smile? We actually got this <clears throat> this client on the Today Show and Rachel Ray because it's like, yeah, people really want to know how can they how can they get a great smile, you know? 
it's pretty, you know, it's kind of a simple idea, but sometimes simplicity is key <clears throat> in terms of uh, an investment advisor. Um, if it's a field where, you know, if you're a realtor or someone like that, like it's a very crowded field and some, some people might think, oh, they're all completely interchangeable in your press release and in your, uh, your headlines. You want to, you know, carve out your own uh, uniqueness and so on. Um, for a uh, nonprofit, again, it's giving people an opportunity to uh, 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 make a difference. In this case, it's the, pr the Prospector Theater that employs adults with autism and Down syndrome and other challenges in <clears throat> Ridgefield, the town that I live in. So, you know, come buy a movie ticket. You can help, uh, help uh, people in need. Um, ways to use a press release. And again, I, you know, if, if anybody wants any elaboration on this, if our time runs, runs out, um, please email me. But number one, post on your website. I talked about, <clears throat> I talked about um, you know, search engine optimization a few minutes ago. And uh, also, um, for some reason, people look at a press release on, on a, a, the website of a, even a small business or you know, a service provider a little differently than they do the rest of the text they'd find <clears throat> on a website. So it's like, of course, they're going to say great things on their home page and their about page and so on. But they sort of see that a press release is written <clears throat> a little bit more as a journalist uh, so that they, they, they sort of see it as a testimonial, which is good. <clears throat> you can distribute your press release through an online service. Uh, this is the company called Cision. Uh, owns a subsidiary called PR, uh, PR Web and PR Newswire. <clears throat> These are ways that you can have a service just, just blast them out. I, like I mentioned, I prefer sending them directly to journalists that I'm interested in getting coverage from, but you can certainly blast them out using a, a service like this. <clears throat> Number three, and then we got into this a little bit earlier from one of the questions, we can pitch individual journalists by email. Uh, you know, there's my friend Candy Carter, who's executive producer of The View, the ABC uh, talk show. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, if you use, e uh, in, uh, you use uh, LinkedIn, they have, if you pay a little bit extra for another level of service, uh, monthly subscription fee, they have what's called in-mail, and so that really puts something right in the email inbox of, uh, of a uh, producer or reporter, um, <clears throat> which who otherwise you might not be able to get their uh, contact information. And usually if I'm using that approach, I'm not going to put my entire lengthy uh, press release <clears throat> in, the, in the note, but more like here's a story idea I think you might be interested in and so on. Um, and that kind of thing. Fourth, and lastly, uh, you can share through social media. Again, another reason I love LinkedIn is because you can post, you know, you write a press release, and here's the Prisoner of War one that I was talking about. You can uh, post it there, you know, on your LinkedIn profile, and it really goes out to thousands of people um, far beyond, you know, if you have like 500 people in your LinkedIn circle, it'll go out to, you know, a couple thousand people, not just your immediate uh, circle. Um, and uh, I guess at this point we have questions. There's uh, Sean Spicer right there. Um, let's see, Anthony. Anthony has great questions today, by the way. <clears throat> do you find the list Cision provide are worthwhile, worth the cost, or do you find Cision is a value for other reasons? Um, depends what you consider expensive, <laughs> I guess. I like working with individuals, and a lot of the individuals I work with are somewhat budget-minded. I don't want to be you know, the cheapest uh, publicist in town or whatever, <clears throat> but they are often financially uh, budget-conscious. And so when I first started out 10 or 12 years ago, I did buy an annual subscription fee to Cision, but I found that it was not necessarily kept up. I mean, theoretically, on this Cision database, you go to like, well, I'm interested in all the producers at the Today Show. Click on the Today Show. It'll give you 30 producers. This producer handles this kind of story, et cetera, et cetera. But I found that there's such a fast turnover in the news media that a lot of times that information is out of date. I mean, the people at Cision would probably tell me, no, you're wrong. It's not out of date, but I found that it is. And um, because I tend to focus on certain themes, I get to know journalists. I mean, it helps, it helps if you already have an existing relationship with them. We all have to start somewhere. But uh, if, you know, if you're in real estate, for example, and you're just going to be going back to the same um, contacts, newspaper reporters, et cetera, uh, maybe once a month or something like that, um, I would encourage you to just develop your own list and not spend thousands of dollars on Cision. But if you have a client with deep pockets, why not? It's helpful, and then you find out what's 
Okay. Yeah, well, you just handed it back uh, to me. Uh, this is Steve Smith again. We did. We do have a couple other questions here, but I wanted to give you a chance to have a sip of tea. <laughs> and I had a couple other thoughts. Um, first off, I think that that's actually not Sean Spicer, that that's Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> but well, when I first looked, yeah, I know. When I first looked, I said, oh, of course. And then I wait a minute. That's yeah, because I've seen that skit. That that's fantastic. The other, another thought, a little more serious, is that um, Tom's been talking about or mentioned SEO uh, several times, and I was just kind of struck by how important that is in the whole digital press release world. And uh, as some support for that, I would encourage you uh, to go to our website, uh, and you'll see that we do have a series of workshops. These are live face-to-face -face workshops on SEO, and also we have in our archives at least one uh, archives of our webinars, at least one uh, webinar on SEO as well. And so I'd encourage you to go to you know either or both of, the, of those, and uh, this is an extremely important uh, topic. Um, now I'm going to bounce back to the questions for a minute here because um, we skipped over Angela Russo's question here, Tom, about about um, is there a difference between how you write a press release for your website and what you submit to the press or a handout? Okay, um, excellent question, Angela. Sorry to uh, missed your question there. Um, I would say no, there is no difference. I mean, there's a, there is a difference between the, the tone you would take when writing the copy for your website, you know, your homepage and your bio and the different services you offer and you know that kind of thing but a press release really should be written more as a neutral journalist so you know you avoid all, all those you know to to kind of exaggerate it a bit you don't use the words like you know fantastic or amazing or, you know you're not selling it like a commercial or something um so when you post that uh press release whether it's on you know your website or sent out to journalists it should still take that sort of neutral tone and because you sort of take that neutral objective tone even if you are saying you know this is a you know a great advantage to you know people looking for this kind of thing or something like that um it's seen sort of as as a testimonial like it, it even though you wrote it you did write it yourself um it it has the same weight and sometimes even more weight than uh, a, a, a testimonial that somebody would give you or that you'd feature on your website. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, the uh, no extra charge for the um, police vehicle going by. Um, yeah, so we do have a couple other questions here. And, and again, pe folks, uh, go ahead and post your questions down in the chat room. We've got about you know 10 minutes to go. Um, we could go if if, uh, if need be. Uh, so uh, Leanne Mc McAvoy has a question. Is it interesting question? Is it worth trying to build a relationship with a specific journalist prior to sending a press release? What do you think, Tom? Um, that is an excellent question, and the definite answer to that is yes. And in fact, if you look on uh, the list of SCORE webinars here for the, the webinar I did here a few months ago, you'll see that I talk a lot about that, as a matter of fact, and I really, do, I really actually do encourage people to start building those relationships first with a compliment, not just love your work, but it's like I noticed, you know, last week you wrote such and such an article or you did this, you know, television news segment. It's like the next time you do that top, you know, focus on that topic, here's an idea that you might find helpful, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So rather than like right out of the gate, it's like you should do a story about me. It's like that, that's a little bit pushy. It's okay, you know, give it a shot. But, um, but I think you raise a very good point. And if you want more information about that, you know, please watch and listen to the webinar that I did a few months ago. Thank you. Yeah, back to Angela, uh, Tom, a follow-up question. And she, remember, she asked the question about uh, write the press release for a website or handout. She says, should it be in the first person or the third person? Mm -hmm. um, I would say the third person. Normally when I write a, a, um, a, a press release, I do think, you know, that it should be written in the third person. But that's not to say that, you know, if you had a, a story that you think would be great for, you know, Oprah Magazine or, um, you know, Entrepreneur Magazine or something like that, you, you, you don't write a letter 
saying, you know, I've been in this field for X number of years and I've developed, you know, a certain uh, niche or something like that. So, you know, you can certainly reach out to journalists in the first person and sometimes that works. I mean, you know, back in my CBS News days and Good Morning America days, I certainly would do stories that people people sent me letters, even even snail mail. It's like, here's an idea. I think you guys should do this story. So there's nothing wrong with that. But at that point, I think it no longer you know, could be considered a press release. It's more of a personal pitch, but there's, there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to follow up with Angela's second follow-up question, uh, just for continuity here. Should your uh, press release include a quote from you? Um, yes, I encourage that. Um, definitely encourage that. Um, you know, early in the hour, I talked about passion. You know, whenever I would do interviews, whether it was with an, for an, with an entrepreneur for CNN Business News or with a restaurant owner for the Food Network or whatever it might be, I was always looking for that passion. You know, and as Steve mentioned, uh, early, you know, when we started here, uh, I've been writing a book for years now. Got to finish this book but uh, sort of uh, celebrating my old mentor, Charles Corral, at CBS News, because he said, everyone has a story, and I really love that idea of how everyone has a story and that everyone is passionate about something. Often it's the business we started or the product we invented or the book that we wrote or something like that. And so that quality of passion is really important in sort of in our pitch. And so to convey it in written form, you definitely want quotations from you. So you might... You might uh, it's funny, uh, I have a friend who's now a writer with Vanity Fair. She was a senior producer at Good Morning America. And prior to that, she worked for People Magazine, and she actually got a call from our president, who was not president at that time, of course, but uh, he, he didn't use the name Donald Trump. He said it was John Miller, I think it was. And here's a really good story for People Magazine. So there's something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it exactly like that, but there's something to be said for if you, you know, can... Uh, get a friend to say, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll put out these press releases un under my name. I'll, I'll sort of partner with you. You know, you do the writing, and because uh, I think it can be a little bit more persuasive if you have a publicist. Um, sometimes journalists think, okay, well, this person contacted me directly, and if I call them on the phone, they're probably going to get engaged in a one-hour conversation, and I don't have that kind of time, and you know, I'd rather speak to somebody who does this professionally. So, you know. If you don't want to use a, an official um, publicist, uh, you might partner with a friend to do something like that. Yeah, great answer. Yeah. Um, oh, I got to go back up here to Amy Kalafa. I hope I pronounced that. I didn't butcher that too bad. And this is a really, really interesting one. Uh, how do you suggest incorporating video into your press release? Now, be careful here, Tom, because this uh, this is a question I have of. Our group here at SCORE and how that how to incorporate video and photos into all the marketing stuff that we do. So uh, have a go at it. Um, well, I guess I mean what I do is probably the most. There, there, there are probably better ways or you know more state of the art ways. But again, when I write a press release, I will put a link at the bottom to a video you know that maybe I've uploaded to YouTube. Um, so that when, again, you know. YouTube is the second largest search engine in, in the world next to Google, and so people are if they don't know your name or the name of your company or the name of your book or product or whatever, they, they might be searching for those keywords. So I definitely believe in using uh, YouTube. So I will just put the link at the bottom, and I do, whenever possible, I do encourage my clients to you know, do a, even a local you know, interview uh, so that you know, bigger and better shows, so to speak, can see, oh, that person does a really nice job on the air. That we should, I can see them, you know, I can kind of envision them on our show. And then when I am sending a press release by email, um, I might, well, I shouldn't say I might, I almost always do write a two or three sentences right at the top saying, you know, dear Bill, uh, here's a story that I think would be great for Veterans Day. You know, uh, please give it a read if you have a minute. Uh, down at the bottom, you'll find a link to a video of, you know, this person, uh, um, so you can see how per you know compelling they are. I think it'd be great for your show. So there's there's room for that little pitch up top, so you don't have to put the link at the very bottom and hope that they read all the way to the bottom. That's that's the kind of thing that's worth mentioning right up top. And some some uh, publicists do 
pitched totally through video. They click on, you know, they see the subject line, they open the brief note, there's the image, you know, from YouTube or from the website or from uh, from a server, and they click on, you know, and it's a totally, you know, video um, pitch, which is great. But, uh, you know, again, I don't know if it's that I'm a little bit old-fashioned or that I think that people, as they're making story choices, do like to read. So, you know, on their own time, that's why they like, you know, they, they like that email approach, but that's what I would do with respect to video. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I'm going to skip over Gary. Don't don't take it personally. And uh, to Kathleen, this is a pretty fairly long question, Tom, so I'm going to read it slowly and uh, give, maybe give it time for you to think about it. Um, if my release is of interest to two different areas of an outlet, say business and calendar, and I'm hoping to get picked up by one or both, is it appropriate to send the release to two different people at the same outlet on the same email? Question mark. Just hold on a minute here. Where I think Tom is. Yeah, can you can you see it, Tom? Well, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you again. Yeah, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Here we go. So it's from uh, Kathleen Blood, and if my release is of interest to two or different areas of an outlet, meaning I guess a, you know a distribution of the message out kind of outlet, say business and calendar, and I'm hoping to get picked up by one or both, is it appropriate to send the release to two different people at the same outlet on the same email? Question mark. Um, yes, I believe there's value in sending to two different people. Um, some publicist friends of mine saying, oh, well, if you're, you're hoping to get your story on Good Morning America, make sure you just send it to <clears throat> one producer at Good Morning America because uh, if two producers, if you send it to a dozen producers and two of them open it and read it and like it and sort of take ownership of it, they're going to be fighting like, hey, I want to do that story. Um, personally, I think it's good. to. That's like a quality problem as far as I'm concerned. So often with a show or a newspaper, I will send it to several people. But your question is more about sort of for two different purposes. I think in your for a calendar item, you want to give them a little bit of context. So you might make it a tight paragraph before you get into you know the who, what, when, where, etc. Um, so that because you do need to give them some context. Again, you know I I, I meant in my previous score webinar, I talked about make you know make the producer and the journalist job as easy as possible make it as easy as possible for them to say yes so this is the same sort of thing with a calendar item but i think for a business section item they would be happy to read a couple paragraphs you know get a better sense of the story because you know they can they can jump out of that press release at any time so it's better to give them enough information rather than make it too short but i think the people who put the calendar pages together um are like they do like brevity, but you still have to put it in a little bit of context. Okay, great, thank you. Now this will be the last question. Back up to Gary Banks. Um, his question is: What are the biggest mistakes that you can make, and obviously things you should avoid when doing press? It's a good, good kind of like wrap up question, um, I think. Yeah, that is, that is an excellent wrap up question. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I would say the biggest mistake that you can make is not taking action to reach out to the media at all. So many of us do a great job. I mean, we probably, you know, we all probably have some friends that we know of who do a great job, but they're I don't know if they're shy or busy, but they never take action to um share their knowledge and, you know, expertise with or a great product or a great book with the world. Um in the, you know, the book that I I'm writing my, the first page is a quotation from uh, Wayne Dyer, the late Wayne Dyer, and he said, "Don't die with your song still in you. If you have something to share, do it." You know, I'm, I've, I'm a big believer in the Nike uh, philosophy, so that's one mistake. But the other one is to, um, if you are interacting with a journalist, especially if you don't have a lot of experience doing that, um, always keep in mind their time is very, very precious. It doesn't mean that they're more important than you. Um, you're going to connect with some people, especially if you cast kind of a wide net. You're going to find some people who love talking with you and some other people who are kind of abrupt. But uh, don't let that deter you. But just realize, you know, you, you could even practice with a friend 
you know, what's your five-minute pitch? What's your what's your elevator pitch? <clears throat> so, um, you know, I think that I think that you want to remember in your <clears throat> in the enthusiasm of sort of first timers, uh, it's easy. You, you know, you get a reporter on the on the phone, and you want to go on and on. Excuse me. I say that this great uh, great timing here to end as your voice starts to uh, starts to leave you. And I, we do have one more question. I'm not going to and I'm not going to ask you to answer it now, but I would ask maybe Anthony to send you an email with that question. It seems like a follow up question on the idea of sending moldable recipients at the same uh, same uh, point. Anthony, I, I hope that's okay with you, but you see Tom's contact information there, and uh, I do like to end these things uh, right at 1 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, now, just as a reminder, we do have two webinars a, a month, and the next one is time management with a focus on customers, which is really hard to do, so I think uh, it might be something that everybody would find interesting. and. I'd like to say on behalf of SCORE, thanks to everybody for attending. We had very good attendance, excellent, excellent questions. And um, I'd like to, of course, thank, thank Tom Martin for presenting at the second time. And this is a, just a reminder, please go to fairfieldcounty.score.org to uh, just have a review of all of our, our, uh, our, our services, and we're, we're here to help you. Have a nice day, everyone, and very much a happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.